What is a woman? Matt Walsh's Daily Wire doc had a massive bump last week on Twitter. In the documentary, the least confused group he interviewed were the Maasai tribe in Kenya, who were too busy fighting off lions and dysentery to give a f what their pronouns were. Lizzo finds a way to complain again, despite being able to afford a Popeyes franchise all for herself. Despite her dunking on these pesky internet trolls, her doctor is still just begging her to eat a salad. Burt Kreischer came out with the machine, which has been a little bit of a flop at the box office. But see, that's a good thing, though. Because if this movie were a success, Burt would have enough money and excitement to drink himself to death. No. No, now his friends, family, and fans have to put up with him just a little while longer. Welcome to the In The Bank Podcast. Welcome. Actually. <laughs> Welcome all to the In The Bank Podcast. My name is Jackson. I'm here with Rohan Kapoor. Rohan, how are you doing? How was your weekend? Uh, it was good, dude. I saw the uh, Burt Kreischer movie. You know, so that was uh, that was a fun uh, time. I saw that too. What did you th What did you think? What were your thoughts? All right, this is kind of a hot take, but I actually really liked Burt Kreischer's movie. Like, I I genuinely enjoyed the whole entire. Really, movie. I really liked it. What did What did you like about it? Well, here's the thing. I came in with really low expectations, right? Okay. Like, so the acting sucked. Um, right. The acting was terrible, but I didn't expect Burt Kreischer to be acting well. Right. What I liked right. about it was the whole entire time, it had my attention. It's like a, it was like such a stupid movie that it like it kept yeah. my. It like kept like my like fucking like monkey brain like fucking like amused the whole entire time. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to explain it. See, I don't know what you mean because here's my experience. I went in similar to you. I had low expectations, right? But I was like, maybe I was like, this is I was like, this is not going to be a great piece of cinema, right? Like Martin Scorsese's not going to go see this thing. But I was like, maybe I'll laugh. Maybe I'll have a good time. And I go in. And they do the first scene where he's sitting in therapy with his family. And immediately I'm like, this is not going to be good. Like I just knew <laughs> from there. I was like, this is, this is going to be a waste of my time. And the movie's like 90 minutes, I think. 12 minutes into it, I'm like looking at my watch. Like when is this going to be over? And so maybe I didn't give it enough of a chance. And maybe it's a slow yeah. burn. So that's entirely possible. But... My experience with it was I, got, I walked out of it and I said, that's the worst movie I've ever seen at a theater. Like I've gone to see at a theater. Okay. That's fair. Right. That's, that's fair yeah. to say, like, because you actually paid money, right? Like what was it, like, I don't know, like right. 10 bucks for the ticket. Uh, right. It would have been a really good, like streaming Netflix type of movie where, yeah, you know, if you're really you get, like poor, high or drunk and watch with your yeah. buddies or whatever, or just keep yeah. it on in the background. But I don't know. I was really hungry. I had two big fucking hot dogs, a thing of popcorn, right? That I was just scarfing down. And okay, the therapy scene in the beginning sucked, but like, I enjoyed myself. Right? I woke up from a nap earlier. Mm -hmm. I just went straight to the theater. I was like, "Fuck it, let me just do it." Right? I enjoyed myself. I I, I genuinely really liked it my experience there that's I'm, I'm glad you had a good time i really am yeah was, I, uh, I did not i hated it <laughs> what did uh what did john what did john think of it i don't know he was drunk so oh uh, okay he was he, drunk so i don't know he was feeling himself i i woke up to that text from you guys and was like oh no they went and saw it too <laughs> well yeah i woke up so i woke up i took my uh, after friday nap right after work on friday yeah. nap, my rec my recovery and uh, right. obviously, Maya Pizza Club doesn't do stand up anymore, and I get no bitches. Yeah. So uh, I was like, "All right, I, let me just go hit the uh... saw the machine." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Let's just go see the machine." Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what it was for us too, because I had a couple of my buddies in town. You got to meet them, but um, and uh, they we, we had like two hours where we had nothing to do. And so we were looking at movies and that was the only one that was like playing at the right time and was short enough. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, Oh fuck it. Let's go see the machine. Um, I think I looked it up after cause I was curious. I think 
they have not made their money back yet. So like, I think it was an $8 million budget and they're like, just, they're just under it. They're at like seven, five right now is what they've made on it. So they'll probably make their money back on it, which is good. That's usually, I don't know. Obviously you want to make money on it, but at least they didn't like lose a bunch. You know I mean? Dude, it. How the fuck do you get to eight million dollars filming the fucking machine? I'm pretty sure, like, Get Out was like know. a two million dollar movie. Yeah, I think they probably had to pay Mark Hamill a decent amount of money to do it. Um, that's probably a good chunk of it. He's the guy. He played his dad. That's that's Luke Skywalker. That's the guy who played Luke Skywalker. Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> Bro, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah. What a dumb financial decision. That's not like, like his acting was ass too. It wasn't like yeah. you could have got. Yeah, he was. I mean, it's hard to like. I mean, he was like, you, you can't expect him to make like gold out of shit, right? Like, it's like. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know he's, I mean? he's maybe sprinkled like, some. Pressure makes money. diamonds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pressure makes diamonds, but just throwing a bunch of money at one actor doesn't make diamonds. Like, that's not pressure. That's just dumb budgeting. But, um, yeah, he's, so I think, I bet you his salary was a good chunk of that. I bet you Bert's salary was a decent amount of that. And then a lot of, I don't know, did they do much press for it? The only press I saw for it was like on Instagram. So probably not. I saw, I mean, Bert was doing his, um, whole entire like podcast runs with yeah, like everybody. And I think he was also promoting his, yes. his special at the same exact time as the, you know what I mean? So I think it was like, kind of like a mix between that. Uh, Did you Mm. watch this? Did you watch Bert? I, I, I enjoyed the movie more than Bert's newest special. I'll say that. I actually haven't seen a special. I don't know. I didn't watch the whole thing. Yeah, don't. I couldn't watch the whole thing. So that's why I was like, for what? For Bert Kreischer comedy, right? Like, mm-hmm. the fact that I was able to watch... I'm never going to watch this movie again, but the fact that I was able to watch this whole entire thing and kind of have some level of focus in contrast to his special, I think it's a win for the movie. Yeah. Because his special is really hard for me to watch, bro. It's just... Okay. I don't know. I, uh... The only reason I didn't walk out of the movie is because I was there... I was hosting friends for a trip, and I didn't want to, like, force them to walk out with me. If one of them stood up, I would have gladly followed him out. You know, like if if I was there alone, I would have walked out. If I was there, I would never take a date to that movie. I don't want her to think I'm fucking retard. <laughs> Are you a Burt Kreischer um, fan? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a great that's a great way to like get selected for like any any woman like you would want to spend time with. That's a great way to not spend time with her is come out as a Burt Kreischer fan. That's how, um, I don't know if you know this, but in the military, when they recruit, like, the lowest level GPA kids, that's how they quickly weed them out. They just ask, who here finds Burt Kreischer funny, right? And if anyone raises yeah. their hand, yeah, <laughs> well, it's normally something like the autistic, the autistic room just banging on right. the door, me, 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 right? But, you know, in the, in, if it's like everyone in the gym. I think it's not even autistic people who find it funny because like autistic people are very like intelligent at that, like a few things, right? Mm -hmm. So I think they can kind of see what's going on and be like, this is for dumb people. I think it's just like for people from Florida and other fat white Americans and then like other alcoholics, you know what I mean? Mm. Because I I saw him, he was doing, he was doing a podcast and I saw, I saw a clip of it and it, he was like, he was like, he was, Chris, he was talking about Joey Diaz. He was telling a Joey Diaz story, but the story started off. He said, Joey came over for Christmas Eve with my family. And on Christmas Eve with my family, I was so drunk that I passed out in my closet. And that like, that was the opening of the story. And he just said that like it was a normal occurrence for him, right? Like passing out on Christmas <laughs> Eve when he has like family over. Right. And I was just like, this guy has an issue. You know what I mean? I mean, maybe that's part of the, I, I kind of think it might be part of the brand. You know what I mean? No, for sure. I think that's who he tries to, he tries to cater to like 
alcoholics. Like AA meetings, watch his yeah. stand. Like if you've gone to an AA meeting, you know who Brett Kreischer is, right? That's that's who I think his main target audience is. Um, yeah. I don't. I mean, because I don't like I. I don't. Have, there's comedy is subjective, and I'm not gonna. Not I know. Hard. I know. Some, I, I was gonna say I know some smart AA guys who are punching the air right now because you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> they're not happy you just said that. But continue. I'm sorry. It's like I may be a drunk, but don't call me a fucking Burt Kreischer. <laughs> 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 exactly that's yeah that's what they're probably doing right now but anyways continue listen i'm not gonna knock on how hard burt kreischer has worked because during the pandemic yeah. he was everywhere in terms of shows left yep. and right i'm not gonna take away from his work ethic comedy is subjective right like i don't like i do not find amy schumer funny i do not find whitney cummings right. funny right but they fill up arenas. So at the end of the day, you can't hate on their success like that. But all I could do is right. just poke fun at the fact that Burt Kreischer makes uh, – at a Burt Kreischer, uh, like, event, the, the, drink, the drink minimum is probably like eight or nine, so people can start laughing. And, like, that's, like a, that's the equivalent of a two-drink minimum for other stand-up shows because it's just, it's just a bunch of degenerates. Like, that's who I think was really fat Americans in trailer – I think that's his core audience. Um, but, I mean, it's okay, right? I mean, everyone it's, has their niche audience. And listen, if we watched this movie. We made him richer. So power to him. Yep. Yeah. I'm not calling Bert dumb. I think he's far from dumb. I'm calling – I'm saying his material is for dumb people is what I'm saying. Yeah. Very fair. Very yeah. fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's a, that, that, that's a perfect analogy. for a specific kind of American. Yeah. And – they're not, you know, if they went to college, they went for seven years like he did. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's who he's, uh, that's who he's for. And that's great. Cause they're people too. You know what I mean? Of course. Um, yeah. Fat people, you know, you know, talking about, uh, fat people, actually, um, mm -hmm. I came across an article about Lizzo. Okay. Nice. What'd she say? She's. Listen, I know I know the word Lizzo and fat shaming are pretty much like hand in hand now. But she right, right. said fat shaming her is making her hate the world. Right? Lizzo said fat shaming mm -hmm. her is making her hate the world. Uh I have a pretty unique perspective on it. I'm actually kind of on Lizzo's side in this case, which okay. is kind of unique. Just yeah. because I think when you're worth fucking $40 million, right, responding to Twitter trolls is kind of lame. And I think people calling her fat, like, you know, shit on Twitter are some. I think people who complain on Twitter are some of the weirdest people on the planet, but especially like mm -hmm. who just who just fat shame Lizzo all day. Uh, but I think I think it's. uh I think in her perspective, she needs to fix some things, but also I'm kind of on her side on this one, which is, you know, it's a rare occurrence. You know what makes me hate the world? What? Fatties. <laughs> Especially the ones who make a gazillion dollars for being fat and then find a way to make that a negative. It's like, why are you complaining? But I think... I, here's why I'm mad at Lizzo. It's not because she's fat, like, you know, whatever. Whatever, however you want to live your life, I don't care, right? Here's why I'm mad at Lizzo. It's because she came in, she was in the episode of The Mandalorian, and I'm a big Star Wars guy. I really am. And, like, I grew up watching Star Wars. I've seen Revenge of the Sith about 40,000 times, okay? Okay. And I saw... Lizzo come in on the Mandalorian and not only is she like she takes up the entire screen right but she's standing next to Jack Black who's like a seasoned actor you know what I mean like he's say what you want about Jack Black I love the guy I think he's awesome he's like yeah. done his he's, he's paid his dues in Hollywood right so uh -huh. when he gets a cameo he should be getting he, he gets a cameo next to someone who's never acted before he should be getting the lines right 
Mm-hmm. But he's he, he and Lizzo are a married couple. And also, Jack Black's not a small guy. He's not a small guy. Standing next to Lizzo, it looks like Lizzo ate Jack Black. Like, she's humongous. I didn't know she was that big. <laughs> and then she also... She also ate all his lines. She take she took all of his lines. So Jack Black is just fucking standing there. Doesn't get any lines. So like he gets like this guy who's paid his dues in Hollywood is like, man, I get to be in a Star Wars thing. Like that's on a lot of people's bucket list. Shows up and some fat cow who's never acted before gets to take all of his lines. That pissed me off. That's why I'm mad at Lizzo. It's not because she's fat. It's because she stole lines from someone who I think deserved them more. That's what I think. And if you, if anyone knows, it's a very niche reference, but she did a Johnny Taco on this guy. She t- took all his lines, she spit him out before he could, and he, he didn't have the support that, that the Johnny Taco guy had. All right, no well, who's, get that, like all right but, it, but what does that have to do with Twitter trolls, <laughs> bro? Are you... I'm just mad at her. So if she says something about Twitter trolls, I'm not, I'm not on her side because I'm mad at her for other things, and I don't know how to, like, appropriately take my anger and put it to okay. the side and be rational. So I'm just mad at her, right? Okay, fair. So you're, you're kind I, of- I can't saying, be objective about this. Okay, fair. You can't have a bi- non-biased opinion there. All right, that right. makes sense. But I, I wanted to look at it from the perspective of somebody who's incredibly like famous, right? Getting bullied by a bunch of losers on Twitter, right? And her, mm-hmm. like, she's fat. Everyone knows this. She knows this, right? But her, her yeah. letting that get to her from 13-year-olds on Twitter, that's where I was like, you know, I'm on her side because somebody of her stature, uh, not size-wise, but, like, popularity-wise, um, shouldn't shouldn't be affected by this and like they should like laugh at that right but i I was just shocked that she's like letting that get to her head you know what i mean but well listen you you sort of just opened the door for me because now i feel like i can relate right like you know we're no lizzo but we've got 56 subscribers now 57 57 57 right 57 subscribers subscribe if you're listening but so you know i kind of relate to like the level of fame she's experiencing right and and we've had call, we had a commenter call me a fat ass, right? We've had that happen a couple of times. Uh, well, one of them we so, knew the guy. One of them we knew the guy. Right, right, right. right. Uh, the other one, legit internet internet troll, called me a fat ass. And then we were at the bar. I told the story on the episode last week. I was at the bar the other weekend, and some chick out of, out of the blue just calls me a fat ass right to my face. And what did I do? I just I called her a cunt and moved on. And that's what I think you should do, Lizzo. Just just fire back. If you want to, if you want to tweet back at him, you know, clap back. You'll have a lot of other fatties saying like you, yeah, you yeah. dunked on him or whatever, posting the fucking, you know, Jordan, the tongue out, you know, that'll be you. <laughs> and I just do that and then move on. Well, in move her on. case, she'd, she'd probably use like a shack gif, right? Like the shack photo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, don't say Jordan, right? That's the fucking yeah. goat we're talking right. about. She, she can use right. like shack or like Glenn Davis or some shit like that. Um, yeah. Well, let's let's tie it back to your case, right? When right. when somebody called you a fat ass on the internet, like how yes. did that make you feel? Mm-hmm. How did that make you feel? Uh, I didn't like it. I mean, it's, it doesn't feel like good. It. It's it's funny. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. funny. You know, I, I, yeah. at the end of the day, you think it's funny, but especially like that's the first time I've ever had someone a stranger tell me that. You know what I mean? So it's like you don't like it. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you and say, oh, I didn't give a shit. Like. It doesn't feel good, you know? Like, that's why That's why at the bar, that's why at the bar I called that woman what I called her. You know what I mean? Because I was upset. I didn't like it. Like, it doesn't feel good when a complete stranger calls you a fat ass. I'm not going to lie to you. And listen, like, I need to lose a couple pounds, but I'm no fucking Lizzo. You know what I mean? Like, there's... There's like needs to lose a couple pounds and then there's eight Jack Black and like has a fucking gravitational pull, right? And I'm not I'm not that big. And I just people, strangers call me that. It happened like a, a few times in succession, like really quick, and I was like, man, I'm like, but you know what it is? 
It's yeah. also motivating. Cause like, I don't, I don't know if you can tell, lost a few pounds this week. Like, <laughs> I think the two are, the two are related. You know what I mean? <laughs> the two are related. <laughs> okay, so next question. After right. you felt bad about being called a fat ass, right? How did you respond? Uh, t- so the I I said what I told the lady in person. I, I she had a I told the story in the last episode, but mm-hmm. go check it out if you want to see it. But um, and then the person on the internet, I think I just I was like oh. And then I probably ordered a salad the next time I got food. <laughs> well, what condiments? And then, uh, I mean, it was probably Caesar salad. Like, it's not even fucking real. It's like that Caesar <laughs> dressing is fucking calories. You know what I mean? That's why I look like this, you know? <laughs> I'm not going to eat kale, right? I'm fucking fuck. But anyways, um, let's think. Uh, probably worked out and then like, you know, I probably laughed, probably thought it was funny after, yeah. after I, you know, after you feel bad for a little bit, you're like, this guy's probably, you know, jerking off to like fucking tentacle porn in his mom's basement. Like, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's probably fat too. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it's good. And the reason I wanted to ask you those questions is right. for the, I feel like I'm a a, yeah. So, well, I wanted, but well, this is therapy, right? I wanted to take this. Right because I saw that internalized hate for Lizzo mm-hmm. and I wanted you to take that energy oh, somewhere else. You're, yeah. You're thinking I hate myself, is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, you tied it back into yourself, right? And that's, a, that's like a right. first warning sign, right? Um, right. And I, this is a message to all like the guys in the mid 20s. I'm not going to go like shoot up a fat camp. Like you don't have to worry about me. Yeah, you don't know, right? But I wanted the kids who may be thinking that to see how you right. turn that negative into a positive with croutons. You know what I mean? Like I want, yeah. I wanted into those. Fake things. Yeah, exactly. I wanted. Stuff. Yeah. Um, so that, that's why, you know, I was asking those questions to you. Thank you. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully I appreciate this is the, good free, the free therapy session. Yeah. Ho- hopefully this is a good session. I don't know if your insurance covers it. Uh, I feel so, better. I'm not paying okay. shit, dude. <laughs> I don't know the insurance. I think insurance only covers 15%. <laughs> You're deductible. I think it's like 400 out of pocket. Um, so, yeah, it just any kid who's thinking about buying a, a strap, putting it in your backpack, let Jackson be your example. Let him. Yeah. Let Jackson be your example. Don't yeah. do not do a written, don't do a Kyle Rittenhouse. We, we shouldn't even be saying that name Could on the you podcast imagine? anymore. Right. Yeah, people get but that that was that's why it happened. But um we made fun of Kyle Rittenhouse. I called Kyle Rittenhouse a weird kid and fucking anyways, but um Liz what wouldn't it be funny if in the news so she's like, I hate the world, right? That's what she said. It makes me hate the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a dark wouldn't it be wouldn't it be funny if Lizzo I just mentioned shooting up a fat camp. Just like is in the news. Like, could you like just Lizzo coming in? Well, just like coming in with like two AR fifteens, like one because she can she can take the kit, right? <laughs> like fucking the Terminator just coming in, fucking <laughs> gun. It. She's got like fucking straps around her shoulders and shit, and just like it, I guess it wouldn't be what what would she shoot up then? Uh a salad and go. Uh, <laughs> a 24 hour fitness yeah dude, uh, shout out salad and go by the way that's good shit an elite what, dude salad and go is an elite place man shout out to them for yeah. real if you like are they only in Arizona I don't know look up salad and go check it out yeah. not only good salads that are cheap but like you can get a breakfast burrito for three bucks there it's pretty good you got like that frozen strawberry lemonade for a dollar. It's so good, dude. Especially mm-hmm. in this heat yeah, right it's now. Yeah, it's just so good. It's yeah, it's just so good. Yeah. You know what? Ma- Bert Kreischer makes comedy for um, male Lizzo's. 
tying it mm. all in together. That's what it is. Yeah. Brit Kreischer makes comedy for male Lizzo's. You know what was part of you know what was part of the movie that I wasn't the biggest fan of is mm-hmm. and like you see this when we go out to clubs, right? And these mm-hmm. mics and shit. But you get like the guy who kind of looks like me, to be honest, right? And he gets up and he's like just goes and is like like, whoa, fuck cancel culture. You know what I mean? And like, sure, but it's like that's not a there's nothing creative about what you're doing, right? Yeah. Like, that was a lot of, like, the one-liners in that movie was just like, oh, I guess, like, feminism. It's like, okay. I don't know. I just think it's lazy. I thought it was a lazy movie. But that was the artist. That, that's what made it good. And honestly, bro, maybe I could have enjoyed the movie so much because I woke up from a nap. Uh mm-hmm. I was really hungry and I had some really good food in front of me, right? So, like, everything around me was, like, already really good, right? Like, I wasn't tired. Like, you've seen me when I'm tired and cranky. I wasn't cranky, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, Right? Like, I was just in a good fucking... You do get moody. Yeah, I was just in a good fucking mood, bro. I was in a fantastic fucking mood. That's good. So, like, I think that's why... I'm glad you had a good time. I really am. But, like, the thing is, like, if I went right after work, right... I would not have enjoyed the movie one bit. Right. So I think if you want to, so just, I guess, to maybe wrap up this point, um, Mm -hmm. if you are going to go watch Burt Kreischer's movie, be in a good mood, you can do drugs. uh, Don't expect much. Yeah. Make sure you're well rested. uh, Yeah. Make sure you're well rested, well fed in a, you know, in a good mental space. Um, so, yeah, it's like, honestly, it's like preparing for a triathlon is like having to prepare for Burt Kreischer's movie. So I, 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 think yeah. that's, I think that's how you enjoy that. Uh, I guess I want to put a nail in that topic then. I know there was something you wanted to bring up. Um, you want to introduce that then? I got a couple things. First, did you notice the – I wanted you to say something, but I'm just going to ask you. Did you just notice the stash and the soul patch? No, nah, I like the stash. Yeah, it's fine. What do you, you like? What do you like the soul? What do you think of the soul patch? I can't really see this it because right of the. I can't see it. So we're 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 on Zoom or not on Zoom on Riverside FM. We, we're, we're a step up. We we put money into this. Shit. It's yeah. not super thick, but I've got this little thing right here, and I'm really proud of it. It's like it's my like adult face. Uh, yeah, just this little little thing right here. So I got a mustache and then the little thing. And I think it's like, I think it's called a Fu Manchu. I don't know if that's true or not. I might have just it... committed a microaggression. One second. You have like the same facial hair as um, as like uh, Master Shifu from Kung Fu Panda. Correct. Yep. So if you and Poe from Kung Fu, if, no, no, sorry. If, if Master Shifu and Poe had a kid, that'd be you. <laughs> God damn it! I, I've had mean comments too. I remember. Uh, well, I guess mine isn't. Was, mine isn't as low as his though. Yeah, yeah I've, had mean, yeah, yeah, I've, I've had mean comments. I've had mean comments. I've had mean comments too. It's okay. When when I was doing um, my tech thing, one guy. The comments yeah. still probably there. Actually, one guy commented. Yeah. I didn't know Taliban reviewed. Electronic products or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I, I don't know. That's fine. yeah. Yeah. It was, I'm not. I'm not worried about it anymore. But when you first see it, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's like you're like, oh, that sucks. It's yeah. like they're trying to be funny too. I was just trying to make a joke about a fucking guy who shot a bunch of people. The, yeah, the Kyle Rittenhouse is. Like white people is like trailer trash Michael Jackson, you know what I mean? Trailer trash Michael Jackson. Like that dude is so okay, that dude that dude is so fucking famous. Like he's he's yeah. the guy who's he's the guy who's lighting the cross at the rallies. Like he's he's like their guy. You know what I mean? That's their yeah. guy. Let me find the right spot in here. Are you pulling up a clip? Yeah, there's a few I want to get to. We don't well, obviously don't have to do them all. 
what's the, what's a so, what's a what's the general overview? Just break that down. So I was on Twitter and um, like Matt Walsh is a guy at Daily Wire and like I'm, are you familiar? Yeah. Um, they're like a concern. Like Ben Shapiro runs it, I think. Yeah. Um, and he made this documentary a while ago, apparently called "What Is a Woman." Mm-hmm. And they were gonna because Elon's trying to do a bunch of stuff on Twitter to like get people and he's like got the whole new spaces thing he's doing with like uh, political candidates and um, he's trying to get a lot of like people to premiere stuff on Twitter and like get more business there and so uh, Daily Wire was like we'll put this we'll premiere this because it's usually behind a paywall apparently. Mm-hmm. And they were like, they made a deal with Twitter to premiere it on Twitter for free for a weekend as like, you know, people could watch it on Twitter and then Daily Wire would like pay to have it be a premiere so they could get their press out there and then, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, get people to buy Daily Wire subscriptions. And they were proud of this documentary and someone was telling me about it. And so I watched it the other day. And it's actually really good because I kind of because like I definitely I don't know I'm not I don't vote or anything but um, like when I watch like Daily Wire stuff or like Ben Shapiro stuff it's usually like them trying to dunk on liberals you know what I mean Mm -hmm. which in my opinion liberals are very like dunk onable Mm -hmm. like there's a lot of stuff to dunk on but in this case like exactly. But in this case, like, he kind of just interviewed these people. So there's a few of them. There's one of them's like a therapist who's gender affirming, right? And another's a doctor who, like, does these surgeries to children or minors um, to, like, get their hormones removed and, like, remove their dick and balls and all that. Um, and then he talked to a few other people who are like sort of on that side of the fence. He talked to a college professor, which for me was like therapeutic shit. Cause I went to a liberal arts college and got an English degree. And so, you know how useless a lot of the people who taught me were. And it was like, he was just the, the professor in this thing was like all of those useless, not all of my professors were useless. A lot of them were, he was all of them put into one and just yeah. like, but Every it was cool. Right? Cause he just, yeah, he just interviewed these people in what I found to be like a pretty genuine fashion, um, and there was there were definitely like this thing is not loading up. Um, right, I'll but, load up. Okay, it's on Elon's Twitter. He like retweeted it. Okay. But um, it was actually like pretty like thought provoking documentary for me because like I was I bought like my stance on this right is like it's kind of silly but I don't care what you want to do with your time and life you know what I mean um and I'll call you whatever you want you know what I mean it's no skin off my back um but it got into a lot of the stuff that I didn't know about is like what they're doing with children like in Canada in Canada so listen to this there's a father so He got a divorce with his wife and they have a daughter and the father was called one day and they were like, Hey, we're going to give your daughter a penis and give her, um, gender transforming hormones. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, you're, he's like, no, you're fucking not. That's my daughter. And he went to jail for doing that because that's in Canada, that's considered family violence. So he was treated like in a court of law, like he beat the shit out of his kid for saying they're not going to get these hormones replaced. And he, when they called him for the documentary, he was like out on bail from jail. And like his trial is this year, I think. So that's a mess. Um, I didn't know that was happening. And then I also didn't know how often there's a guy who was trans, regretted doing the transition, turned back, and then now has like cancer from the hormone therapy and also has like infections where they did the surgery on his genitals. And like he said, he's probably gonna die from it. 
and they never explained the risks to him because they didn't know it because it's like very like mm-hmm. early on to when they're doing this. So it's, I mean, it made me care a little bit more about this stuff because like the guy who was telling me about it, I was like, I don't really care about this. Like, I think it's silly, but it's not my problem. You know what I mean? And now I'm kind of more like, you know, like if my kids get the wrong teacher in middle school and that teacher convinces them they're trans, like I don't want, you know, to have to let my kid do hormone therapy and like fuck them over. You know what I mean? Like if they're 18, they want to do that. I can't stop them. But like, I'm not letting my, you know, some cases like the, the daughter of the, of the guy in Canada was 13 years old when they did this. It's, um, like I, I'm, I'm okay. Like you mentioned, I'm okay when somebody, um, is an adult and wants to do it because you yeah. got to live with your own con your own actions your own consequences right yeah. it won't affect me but it's it's the same thing with consent laws right if you're like, like a kid's yeah. brain their bodies are still developing hormones are like you can't right it, it's gonna mess them up right it's, it's gonna mess them up and i understand mm-hmm. for some of these kids right who are like whatever it may be they're trying to figure things out but to go give getting surgery is just never a good option like pro athletes avoid having surgeries right yeah. you would prefer to be and like forcing kids to have surgeries and like messing up their chemical balances is um you know yeah. it, it's a scary thing i want to actually pull up an article um i don't know if you saw this it came out on friday um let's okay. see uh where is it How do you full screen on the it's F11, right? There you go. Um, share screen. And sorry, anyone who's listening, listening to the full podcast or on YouTube, which they're probably not, um, we'll, we'll cut this down for you. You mean right, Spotify? Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have timestamps. Uh, do you see this? I do, yep. Okay. Logan Brown... A pregnant transgender man is on the cover of Glamour magazine. I do exist, he says, and so do others. Um, A pregnant transgender man is making history by appearing on the cover of Glamour UK's latest issue. He's 27-year-old and is expecting his first child, and I'm a trans pregnant man, and I do exist, and I'm literally living proof. proof. Uh That's tough. This is... Uh, Trans men can't give birth. The truth... Unhighlight that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transgender men give birth the same way anyone feels... Here, I'll let, me read, let me read this out. So Trans Yahoo Life... So Yahoo Life said, yes, trans men can give birth. The truth is transgender men, those biologically born as a female but identify as man, can give birth in the same way anyone with female reproductive organs, uterus, ovaries, and fallopian tubes can. That includes conceiving from penetrative sex with someone with sperm or through assisted reproductive technology, such as, in, I don't know how to pronounce that, or vitro fertilization. Yeah. Um, Despite the fact are overlooked in discussions, dude, this is this is nuts. Like this is this, this is nuts to me. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is this so is, this another is crazy. thing. <laughs> this is that's, wild. So bro. that's kind of what the documentary was about too. Like it was framed from the perspective of Matt Walsh as a father, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, "What do I tell my kids? What a woman is like? That's and so that's he asked all these people at the end of their interviews." What is a woman? No one can really answer it, uh, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, I, it was because I've always sort of been in the opinion, like like I said, don't care what you do if you're if you're an adult, you know, it's sort of your life is your own. I'll call you what you want because you know, honestly, I do think it's I think it's silly, but it's not worth like getting screamed at in public and you know what I mean? It's just not worth it to me to be like yelled at and be called transphobe. So it's like, 
I'll just call you what you want because I don't want to deal with it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, but with this kind of, it's interesting because it's like, and it's, this is, it went back to like what I was talking about the college professor. So he's talking to the college professor, right? And he's asking him like, so what is a woman? Like, how can you define a woman? And then the professor's like, a woman is a woman. And he's like, well, but, and then he's like, what is that? And he's like, well, it's anyone who identifies as a woman is a woman. And he's like, but what are they identifying as? Like, what is the thing they're identifying as? Can you define that? And he's like, um, and then the professor gets like kind of defensive and is like, He's like, I'm gonna, he's like, I'll walk out of this interview. I think at one point he tells him, like, you've got 30 seconds of thin ice before I walk out of here. You know what I mean? And then he's like, I'm just trying to get down to the truth. Like, I want to find out what the truth is about what is a woman. And he's like, he said, using the, the truth, like, talking about the truth was transphobic, right? And to me, kind of why, and I, I was sold the, the lie of, like, a, liberal arts college education. I went and got an English degree and I was there. I was genuinely like, I read a lot. I read like Shakespeare. I read old shit because I think there's a lot of wisdom there. And so I thought I was going to get like a comprehensive education about that sort of stuff and come out sort of more knowledge about what the world is, what truth is. Right. And what I left was, was more confused than I was when I went in because like you're told all these things and you have Like the professor said it, he's like, he asked him, what is a woman? He's like, oh, I teach a whole class on that for 10 weeks. And it's like, why? Why do you need to do that? Yeah. It's like, do we not know what that is? And it's it's a lot of like semantics and weird hypothetical arguments about nothing. And it it really like delineates kind of what reality is in a way. And so this documentary made me care about this a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, in this sense, right, when you, 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 you mentioned it or you tied it in perfectly, it distorts reality. Like, this is a fucking pregnant man on my screen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, and this is not Photoshop. This is not a 2009 yeah, saying... iFunny meme. This is a guy who Yahoo Life is claiming is fucking pregnant. Right? Right. This is, this, this is like I said... And I have to keep reiterating this so people don't, you know, confuse me and what I believe in. I'm okay with calling people whatever they want, do whatever you fucking want, but don't make other people fall into this weird fucking reality that you guys want to, that people want to live in, yeah. right? That's that's the big thing there. You can't force people to live in a reality that's not based off of. Uh, science. Everyone has the right to do their own thing, and everyone has to respect that. Like, but you can't force me to be a part of your reality because you feel like it's important. It's not. It's not having yeah. a bunch of men give birth isn't isn't moving the needle, right? If anything, it's just weird. Mm-hmm. It's just weird as shit, right? Like that's not attractive. Yeah. Like this is that's gross. That is gross. Do you know who? Uh... Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's odd. Um, do you know who Jordan Peterson is? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so he, <clears throat> for those listening who don't know, I don't know how many of them are, but um, he's famous for a lot of things now. But like, he sort of came on the spot, college professor for a long time, clinical psychologist. In my opinion, a really smart guy. But there is laws again in Canada, which is I've said this on the podcast before. Canada's a weird fucking place, but. They were trying to make it into law where if he didn't identify someone by the correct pronouns as a professional psych- psychologist, like they would take his license away. He would have to pay a fine and serve jail time, I think. I don't know ex- what exactly the penalties were, but there were like real penalties that he and other professionals would have to serve, right? And um, he said, no, that's a load of bullshit. He was in the documentary and so I think that's important. Like as soon as, you know, governments start telling what people what to say, right? Because it's like, I'll choose to say, like my stance is still, I think, like I'll call you whatever you want. Um, but if the government's telling me I have to do that, I'm a lot less likely to do that. I'll like start misgendering people because I'm being told I have to. It's like, that's why I don't vote mostly is because people tell me that I should. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> Like, don't tell me how to live my life. I'm not going to vote. 
That's pretty immature, I'm not gonna lie to you, but that's how I operate, right? And I think it, it, it gets even weirder if it starts to be like, not only what you say is we have control over, but what you, like you were saying, believe reality is. Like if you don't, not only do you have to call me this, you have to believe that I'm this or you're a bad person or maybe like you have to pay a fine or some jail time or some shit. Like if that's where it's going, and I don't know if it is, like maybe it's, maybe I'm being weird and conspiracy -y, but if that's where it's going, that's a huge problem. And it's, I would start, I would care a lot instead of a little now. Um, yeah, I mean, in, um, you know, there's another, you know, I'm going to tie this in. There was that, there was a girl in uh, Connecticut. She was a track mm -hmm. athlete. And it was kind of the same thing of like forcing people to live in your reality, right? Mm -hmm. Where in reality, we know men are biologically have advantages when it comes to sports, right? We talk about the WNBA all the time, right? And why they suck. But at the end of the day, they can't, the biology doesn't allow them to compete. Right. Right. Um, you know, in Connecticut, there's a girl, she's suing the state because she lost to a transgender athlete, um, a woman who was trying to compete, or uh, sorry, a man, a transgender, I don't you know what I mean, right? She was competing mm -hmm. in women's yep. sports, right? Yep. Um, I don't know the, I don't know the fucking ins and outs of what you're supposed to say, but she was competing in yep. women's sports and a woman complained and is now suing the school or suing the state because it's unfair right and that's yeah. that's where you got to differentiate what reality is is versus what um personal feelings are because her personal right. feeling says i want to still compete in women's i want to i'm a woman i want to compete in women's sports but in reality but the reality of the situation is it's not fair right it's just simply not fair mm -hmm. Right, you have yeah. biological advantages over a woman, right? And that's that's where that teetering point is, right? It's like okay, we gotta mm -hmm. let people do what they want. I'm not gonna ever be afraid if, you know, I've had, um, you know, I've had, I've I've known people who are LGBT. I'm very open for what they want to do, what they believe in. It's, it's yeah. okay. Uh, but in cases like this, it's like where's you can't force me to engage in everything you want because it's your, because you're trying to put your reality on mine. Right. And it doesn't just go to like transgender athletes. It goes to every single aspect in people's lives. Right. It's like, what's our reality mm -hmm. versus, you know? Yeah. I, uh, there's a lot there. I think, I think that the Connecticut person is actually in the documentary. If there, if she's not, it's someone with a, the exact same story. Um, mm -hmm. But they, then they interviewed someone who's like on the board of trans equality or whatever. And they asked her about athletes and whether or not that's fair. And she was saying that like, sure, trans athletes win, but they also lose too. So it is fair because people lose in life or whatever was essentially. And as she's saying that they're doing like a montage of all the, like trans athletes just dominating. It was kind of funny, actually, like the way they cut it. There's actually, there's really funny parts of the documentary too. Like at one point he goes to um, Maasai Mara, which is in, uh, it's either in Tanzania or Kenya. It's, it's in both. But there's this tribe of people called the Maasai. I actually have been there before. But, um, and something that they do is they have like tourists come. It's like a very, like what, what, all of the postcards of like an African tribe you would see with like the colorful clothes and sort of living in like, um, like mud huts and stuff. That's like where it comes from. That's like, they're like the sort of where the stereotype yeah. comes from. Right. And like when I went to visit them really cool, they have tourists a ton. Like you kind of give them a tip and they, you know, get water and stuff and they'll like show you around They'll do like some dances for you and it's they're really, really chill. And, you know, they're sort of working the system. They know, you know, white people want to come check them out. Right. So they were, they were part of the documentary and he was asking them questions and it was pretty funny, but like he'd ask them like, so do you have any like men that claim to be ladies? And they all just start cracking up. They're like, that's fucking stupid. Like, why would <laughs> anyone do that? <laughs> and, um, he's like, 
he's like, what about like non-binary? Like, do you have any non? And he's like, and they're like, what? And he's like, neither one nor the other. And so he has a translator, like one of the guys is translating for him. And so they, he asked like the group, you know, and then they all just like die laughing. Like they had a great <laughs> sense of humor. It was really funny. Like it was a really funny part of the thing. Yeah. Um, weird, weird stuff. But it's, yeah, it's. Uh, and like I said, I have full respect yeah. for people who need to come out and open up as transgender who are generally right. struggling with their identity right i i it's not a predicament i've ever been in right but i i'm fully okay with it um because every human is different the human brain is so um it's so powerful we don't we don't there's so much about it we don't know right so it's not me to judge uh but you know don't uh don't make it rea the reality there um all right we're at 56 minutes we talk, you know, we can tie into this person as well. Uh, okay. We talked about her a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you know, Bud Light. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> they started selling. <laughs> we're, we just had like a long discussion trying to be all mature and now we're going to fucking dunk on it. Dylan Mulvaney. Let's do it, dude. Let's do it. Let's get toxic. Well, Dylan Mulvaney has Whoa. come out as lesbian. <laughs> Bro, what <Right>. the fuck? <laughs> like, what are we... I don't... Like... Uh, yeah. Right. Have, have you seen... I saw the... Go, go, this go. is where it gets silly because it's like... I don't know if you've seen the coming out video, but uh, they... I don't know. They posted like a video coming out as, I guess, lesbian or, or whatever they came out as. Um, and it's, that's where the shit gets freaky. Cause it's like, it's this weird thing. And it's like telling this, they're telling the story of how they told their family about it. And they're like, my father was like, doesn't that just mean you're straight? And it's like, no, silly. Like, it was just so weird. And it's like, I just can't imagine, I can't imagine having that conversation, like keeping a straight face and just being like, oh, that's really interesting about yourself. Like, thank you for sharing that with me. It's insanity. It really feels like it. I think this is marketing and I respect Donald Mulvaney. 100%, 100%. I have so much respect right now for Dylan Mulvaney because once the Bud Light thing fizzled out right the beer got flat yeah. it's over right keeping yeah. in the news right now right I, uh, she's getting yeah. sponsorships <laughs> left and right yeah because now it's like you right, and I, lights okay keep going you and i have a friend who introduced me to this to dylan mulvaney and when he i won't say his name but when he introduced me he was like Dude, this person's full of it. Like they're not actually. He's like they're. Just, he's like they're just doing this to make a bunch of money. And I was like, I don't know. It seems pretty pretty legit to me. But whether or not it's real, the marketing strategy is. You're right. It's primo. It's beautiful. There's some well, good people. There's some good people behind that. For does sure. does Dylan Mulvaney still have the um uh, like a like a sausage? Don't know. don't know. I don't think I don't I think Dylan still has it. Okay. I think so. I think this is just modern day. This is like the uh what was it, Emron? The the uh the, fine, the pyramid scheme, right? <laughs> Dylan Mulvaney is the is TikTok's uh Brian Madoff. Right? Bernie, but yeah. Bernie Madoff. Okay, let me repeat. Dylan Mulvaney is TikTok's Bernie Madoff, running this big pyramid scheme, right? Getting a bunch of supporters from all these different communities, right? Getting yeah. Bud Light, getting all these different bags, and w when the bag is getting thin, just refills it, puts more <laughs> hormones in there, dude. Dude, <laughs> and what's funny is, is it's it is a pyramid scheme because. Dylan Mulvaney comes in and is like, hey, I can make you all this money 
just give me some money so I can get the money. And then they, they throw this Brinks truck and then everyone boycotts their brand and they're like, where's my money? And then Dylan Mulvaney's like, oh, people are evil. You know, that's, that's a good analogy. It really Dylan, is. Dylan got another fucking bag. You know that, right? They got another sponsorship mm-hmm. right after the Bud Light thing. It was not like as big as a brand of Bud Light, right? But they got it. Like she, they, whatever, got another sponsorship, right? Dude, she's, she's just a bag finesser, right? Like people are so mm-hmm. upset that like this dude wears like lipstick and shit like that. Like so did Dennis Rodman. Who the fuck cares, right? Like right. this is this is a fundamental bag chaser. Like you're telling me you wouldn't? Would you, Jackson? Would you wear lipstick to get a two million dollar deal with Bud Light? Two million dollars? Yeah, that, I'm guessing she. Let's okay. Uh, let's say she got two hundred thousand dollars. Take me two hundred thousand. Two hundred K. Wear to lipstick. wear lipstick in public. Just for like a little or, TikTok I just video. Privacy, my own home. Yeah, how many people would home. see it? Uh, it's a Bud Light sponsorship. A lot. So a lot of people would see it. I don't know if I would do it. But okay, but let's say you don't have to go by. Two million. Jackson. You don't have to go by Jackson Fanger in the video. That's what I'm saying. You can go by something else, like wear a wig. Right, but the people. It's it's not the people I don't know. It's the people that I do know, love, and respect that would see me in lipstick selling out like that. That's who oh, I like, care about. Oh, okay, only I would know, right? Only I would okay. know. And I may or may not tell everybody. So you gotta. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I if I give you half the money, will you keep it secret? I I, I won't. I wouldn't want money from you, right? I I want. I I just like need something to like hold over your head, right? So. Oh, so like <laughs> if I ever act up, you're like, oh, remember that time you were late? I'd do it. Yeah, I'd do it. I'd do it. Sign me up. Two hundred k. I mean, fuck. Two hundred. Exactly. Like Dylan Mulvaney is the greatest bag chaser. Uh, Generation Z has ever seen. I mean, I I, yeah. I think that's what it, I think it's just brilliant marketing, because she's not getting pregnant, right? So she's not really all in right. on the cause yet, right? Like that dude's getting pregnant. Right. Like giving fucking birth is insane, right? That's. I think insane. you have to start as a lady to to be pregnant. Well, I, I don't know. I don't whatever. I, can... I, listen, I'm not I'm not no scientist. You know what I mean? But all yeah. I'm saying is like yeah. still like having a kid <laughs> shoot out. That's an insane. Uh, that's an insane fucking process. Like Dylan Mulvaney is just putting on some lipstick mm-hmm. and fucking, like well, that dude got like what the cover of Yahoo. Who the fuck reads Yahoo? Everyone uses Google nowadays anyway, right? Dylan Mulvaney right. is getting Bud Light in the news again. This is a clout goblin. And here's how bad this was for Bud Light. Like, I love to I'm someone who loves to like do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Like a lot of my closest friends and family, they call me a contrarian asshole because I do the opposite, right? Like when I was what's a, there's so many examples. Like there's just okay. so many. I don't even know. You know vo- voting exactly. Like that's that's exactly it's perfect. And um so it would be in character for me to go once everyone starts boycotting Bud Light to go buy a bunch of Bud Light and like start drinking it. Like that's super in character for me. I can't do it. Like I've tried to go do it and be like, oh, this will be funny. But I don't like I don't want anyone to think I'm a fucking dork, you know, those cans. So was Dylan Mulvaney on the can, like the actual can to drink from? I th- think so i think I've, I've heard two things i've heard yes they made like a limited run of cans that they sold to the public and i've also heard that they only made a specific can or like 12 pack for the ad that they did i've heard them both i don't know which is true okay well if those whatever the case is dude those yeah those cans that's like those are it's gonna be worth something that's, be worth, that's especially if there's only 12 like I want my like that's that's like that's elite gender fluid, you know. Like that's that's mm-hmm. uh, yeah. like Mark Norman. Yeah. That's the Mark Norman thing, right? Like that's yeah. uh, those are limited edition. So it's a great pun. 
It was. Uh, um, did you not see that joke? It was. Uh, I don't think I saw that one of his. It was on Twitter. It was on Twitter, and then Mark Norman all, or uh, okay. Mark Norman also. Everyone was. Everyone was saying. Oh, it. he like retweeted it. And, okay. No, no, he he. It was like one of those jokes. Like Bin Laden plays with the is playing with the wrong rockets. Like everyone is, and then Mark Norman just happened to also okay. say it on a. You know what I mean. Right, it's, it's like I mean, it's a pretty it. easy. It's a pretty easy pun. Um, yeah, it's a good pun though. I haven't heard yeah. it before. I liked it. Yeah, um, I got. I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, what's his name? Carlos Mencia. I'm not stealing jokes. I'm giving credit. Um, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> That's a great yeah, story. Like, Have you seen the so- total total aside? Actually, you go ahead. Not not relevant. We'll stay on topic. Uh, but I was just like, um, those cans right there, right? Like that. Like I, I'd want one. Like I wanted to drink the, the the Dylan Mulvaney beer, right? Like I think like that's an antique. <laughs> like that, those are gonna be worth a lot mm-hmm. one day, right? So I, I don't yeah, know. I, 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 it was a bad marketing choice, but I mean those are gonna be worth a lot one day for Bud Light. But Dylan Dylan is Bernie grace. Bernie Mulvaney, dude. Bernie Mulvaney or Dylan Madoff. <laughs> that's a great. That's a great. Good, good for them. Good for them, man. Okay. Good for, good for their, him, hers, or. It's a good, it's a good move. Yeah. Um, that's all I got. I think we're up on time. Uh, yeah, you got I, anything else, my brother? Uh, no. I would say, um, yeah, you know, go, um, go watch, uh, Kurt Kreischer's new movie out in theaters right now. We're not getting paid to say this. He would never pay us to say this. He, you know, I, he's probably jealous of our 57 subscribers on YouTube. So well, let's keep it a stack, right? Um, go fat shame. Everyone go leave mean comments under Jackson's uh, Instagram posts. Uh, and then go. If anyone can get us a can of the Dylan Mulvaney beer, I will pay you $100 for it. Unopened, unopened, a hundred bucks. Opened, I'll pay you twenty five. I'll sh- I'll pay for shipping and stuff too. If anyone can get me a can of that beer, I will pay you a hundred dollars for it. Um, I will double that offer. I will triple it. I will. Ah, ah, I'll quadruple it. I, I can't do that, sir. Four hundred right. bucks. All right, Jackson will pay somebody four hundred dollars for. That beer, uh, Dylan, for a full Dylan Mulvaney can, hundred bucks if it's empty. Full can of gender fluid. That's what we want. Anyways, yes. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode of the In the Bank podcast. Make sure if you guys are new here, like and subscribe. Uh, no, well, hopefully, like at least two people made it this far. Uh, Jackson, anything else? Um. No man, I think I think that's all I got. Like and subscribe. Um, go check out that documentary, especially I think if you're a parent, I think you should see it on a serious note. Um, and then additionally, tip your masseuse, throw back if you know what that means. Like the video, comment, let us know. Let us know if you've actually tipped your masseuse or if you're a fucking schmuck. Um, I tipped mine twenty seven dollars yesterday. Good. Was it a guy? It was a girl. I don't get massages by guys. Making a mistake. You're missing out. It, um, it wasn't like the. It was a very, very professional. So I don't. You know, I'm, I, I think it would be. We, we've had this. We're not going to get this again. <laughs> right. You're wrong. Peace out. Enjoy Bye. your weekend. This will be coming out. Bye.